Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about my trading plan for the upcoming week. First, we'll talk about why j is going to raise rates until inflation is under control and why actually this is probably a good thing. Then we'll go over all the major indices, starting here with SPY, NASDAQ, Russell 2000, ARK Innovation, which generally counts as my growth ETF. Another thing I do want to mention here that I don't normally is the VIX, and just to see exactly what that looks like right now. And then we'll go ahead and finish up with oil and gas. And then we'll finish up this episode with my current positions in the markets. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this as well as whole portfolio overviews every single week. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Jay Powell says he's going to raise rates until inflation is under control. He mentioned this in an interview on May 17th, where he doubled down on the fact that he's committed to fighting inflation. He said we need to restore price stability, and that is unconditional, even if there's pain involved. So this is actually a pretty important point. So the markets actually responded pretty positively to this. And I think that's because everyone's pointing to the fact that Fed rates going up does make it a little bit harder for the market to grow. But at the same time, inflation also hurts the market. So there does need to be a happy medium between letting the markets run and grow at a solid pace and actually fighting inflation. So in my opinion right now, this is a pretty good stance from the Fed. We need them to fight inflation because inflation does affect the economy in negative ways despite the fact that the only way to do that right now is by raising rates. He also pointed out the fact that unemployment remains extremely low at 3.6%, just off of the lows at 3.5% right before the pandemic. There have been suggestions that he's going to raise rates at least seven times, starting with the 25 basis points hike, and then the 50 basis points hike in May, and most people think that there's going to be several 50 basis point hikes in June and July. In fact, some critics are saying that the Fed is too slow to respond to rising prices, and part of that is due to the fact that inflation is not due just to the large amount of liquidity in the markets, but it's also due to supply chain shortages as well as the war in Ukraine. Even Powell admitted that they could have been better about raising rates earlier, and it's easy to say that in hindsight when the economy seemed to be crashing under the weight of COVID. I also mentioned here that most economists believe inflation is going to peak soon, and then they reiterated the fact that prolonged inflation is a surefire way for an economic recession, again reinforcing the fact that raising rates is not always a bad thing, and it's definitely necessary in this case to help tame inflation, which would impact the economy more negatively than increasing rates. Moving on here to the four-hour chart on the S&P 500, you can see we've had this long downtrend all the way since the 30th of March, and it seems like we may have double-bottomed here from 12 May to 20 May. And since then, we had a little bit of a rally at the end of the week. Not super strong, but it did end up just slightly positive on the day. And then we have the 55 EMA on the four hour chart, which is acting as our resistance. Did so here in 21 April, 4 May, and then again here on 17 May. It does seem like we might get another pop right up into that level, right around $400, which would be a nice little move higher from where we are right now. Moving over here to the QQQs, very similar story, big downtrend, slightly weaker than the S&P 500, but again, a little bit of a double bottoming formation here. Seems pretty strong with a nice little price target of $300, which is about 15 points higher than where we are right now. So for my bias, I'm slightly bullish on both of these going into the next week. Moving over here to the Russell 2000, it's actually slightly more bullish than the other two. You can see we had that same bottom on 12 May, and then that double bottom on the other two charts was actually a slightly higher low on 20 May, which in my opinion, if we get another rally in the bigger indices, that could allow the Russell 2000 to break through these levels of resistance and push up to a much higher price target of closer to $190 per share, which would give the Russell 2000 the most upside out of the three indices right now. Moving over here to the ARK Innovation Fund, a fund that has definitely been struggling quite a bit. Big sell-off from $70 all the way down to $35. So this was a 50-point sell-off in ARK Innovation. But again, you can see it's actually a little bit more bullish than the major indices right now. So we had that big bottom on 12 May along with everything else, or it touched that $35 mark. And then since then, it's actually been holding this nice little bullish formation with the potential for an upside to this 144 EMA, which I would expect to be sitting somewhere around $50 which would be around a 20% upside from where we are right now. So a little bit more potential for upside in growth, just because growth has been beaten down so aggressively. Moving over here to the daily chart for the VIX, or the volatility index for the S&P 500, you can see we've actually been in this slowly ascending channel, which is pretty unusual for the VIX going back quite a while. Usually you see these big spikes and then a slow downtrend. 
similar to this, big spike, slow downtrend, big spike, slow downtrend. So this is a little bit strange. Uh, and what this tells me is that this downtrend is not weak and it's not going to quit very soon. So this minor bullish pattern that we have going on right now, going into the next week, I again, don't expect this to hold too much. On the VIX here, you can see we had this nice little topping formation, a little bit of a retrace, and hopefully we get a failure back down to the 144 EMA, somewhere around 24 points, 25 points maybe, which usually as volatility goes down in the S&P 500, the actual S&P 500 does rally. So we'll see a little bit of a retrace in the VIX, this nice little support line sitting at $22. Maybe it breaks through that 144, retest support. And then I would expect another move lower across all the major indices if this support level holds. And then finishing up here with oil and gas or XOP, you can see we've actually had a slightly bearish trend. Remember this overall trend is still very bullish on oil and gas, but in the very short term, we are at resistance and there's some potential support somewhere around $130. So a couple of percentage points lower than where we are right now. And if we do dip into that area, I would expect we'll find support just like we did here in April, again here in May, and then potentially again right here at the end of May. And if this longer term trend continues, I would expect that we'll break out of this short term bear trend and push these stocks even higher, potentially up to new highs, which would be closer to 145 to 150. Again, if this long term trend holds, there's not strong resistance for a very long time. And again, my short term target is those previous highs at 146, 147, maybe even make new highs closer to 150 or 155. Moving over to my personal accounts, you can see it's still been a pretty rough year. All the markets are down and it's been hard to trade. But right now you can see I'm definitely a little bit bullish. I sold the 175 puts in my IRA against the Russell 2000 for $150, expecting to make that here on Monday. And then we have the Qs. I sold two puts at 186 for just under $300 each. And then I sold one ratio spread for around $200 right down here at 284. So giving me a little bit lower break even. So if we go over here to the trade curve on the QQQs, you can see my break even is all the way down here at 282.50. I expect to find some decent support around 285, which is where we found support again this week. And if the stock rallies on Monday, I'll make around $760 on just a couple of contracts. You can see how that's spread out here. Sold two puts at 284, bought one put at 285, and then sold two more puts here at 286, giving me that pretty low break even with a nice little solid, with a pretty solid potential for profit if we get a nice little rally on Monday. So definitely let me know down in the comment section, what's your plan for trading the next week? Are you slightly bullish or are you thinking all of this is going to fail and we're going to find new lows? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes and have a great day.